अच्छा पीपीडी भी थी ना जब हाँ यस सर हेलो जबरन प्रिंसिपल <laughs> ये
गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर Sir, shall we start, start sir? Yes. Oh, okay, sir. We can start. Sir, from sir, sir. Yes, sir. We can start. And Dr. Jayapur, yes, we can start. Madam, sir, madam. Sir, madam.
can we start sir yes madam you can start okay okay a uh, very good morning and uh, welcome to all of you on the national webinar on gpat and nipper tips and tricks uh, actually this is a very uh, keen subject and very interesting subject when the bfarm students enter in the second year the pg and all gpat nipper they are having a huge craze among themselves how to study how what are the uh, uh, techniques to study the gpat and nipper how to crack this uh, in national level examinations so here we are with, uh, uh, our doctor uh, इंस्ट्रक्शनफुली Uh, because these are uh, very uh, these small small things are very important mute your microphone uh, raise uh, do not raise your hand whenever the queries uh, just que whenever uh, at the end of the sessions queries will be taken up taken and uh, speakers will uh, speaker will surely answer your all queries Yes, sir. Sorry for the technical issue. Uh, so, yeah, I heartily welcome you all on this uh, uh, beautiful morning. Before starting the webinar, I just want to introduce about the college and the MNR Educational Trust. Yes, our MNR Educational Trust, uh, the MNR College of Pharmacy, uh, runs under the MNR Educational Trust, which is among the uh, one among the Three top grade institutions of MNR Educational Trust. MNR Educational Trust is established in 1974 uh, by Sri M N Raju Bharat with the uh, noble aim to shape the students into proud citizens of India. Uh, Dynamic Vice Chairman Dr. Sri Ravi uh, Sri Ravi Varma Manthana adds a perfect blend of modern approaches to achieve the goal. Uh, MNR College of Pharmacy, which is established in the year 2004, this college is approved by AICT and PCI. MNR College of Pharmacy is affiliated to Uthmania University, Hyderabad. Uh, we, uh, we are uh, offering B Pharmacy, PharmD, M Pharmacy, and PharmD Post Baccalaureate courses uh, in the campus. We are having a state of art uh, art pharmaceutical laboratories, which are required for the uh, curriculum. in the library is the uh, heart of the college which consists of more than 1000 uh, for specialized uh, and subscription of journals with digital library facilities along with the regular uh, curriculum uh, we are uh, conducting co curricular activities like conferences guest lectures then industrial visit and then extra so we will be involved in culture uh, involved like cultural and sports activities we have working with uh, 50 um, uh, uh, 50 faculties among which 12 faculties with phd and uh, how uh, many of them are uh, many of the faculties are registered for the phd and about to complete the phd b amnr college of pharmacy is running under the Upship of our uh, beloved principal, Dr. V. Algar Sami, from seven, who is having twenty-three years of teach, years of experience in teaching and research. He is a recipient of a Young Scientist Award from Department of Science and Technology. He is a member of many uh, com- uh, national and level committees like AI City sub- as an AI City subject expert. He is a member of a board of studies at Smania University, and in, at international level, he is the uh, member of New York Academy of Sciences. He has been published one one fifty plus research papers. He is editor of anti-infective Bentham Sciences, which is a very well known uh, series. 
international series. He is the editor for that uh, anti-infective agent international journal. He authored six book and uh, having one patent in his credit. He is a recognized PhD guy in JNTH, Osmania University, Kasaru uh, at uh, uh, Karpagam University. Recently, Sir uh, Principal Sir Dr. V. L. Sir Samisar has been awarded with a, a, point, a, a top ten, a two per, top two percent scientist of the world by the Stanford University USA. His work was appreciated all over India, his, at nationally as well as internationally. Uh, that uh, management has been uh, management has appreciated by uh, giving a huge felicitation program. The uh, in Tamil Nadu, the Chief Minister has tweeted his uh, tweeted his achievement on by. Uh, uh, on social media and many more newspaper and uh, newspaper has covered this news and we are very proud to be uh, to work with principal sir so uh, it's uh, it's all about the college and the principals uh, dr vilgar sami so here we can see that the mnr college of pharmacy is working and working uh, working and taking a great effort for the uh, growth of the students and as a part of this today the seminar has been organized now i request dr uh, v algar sami sir to uh, give the welcome address hello am i audible madam hi yes, sir uh, good morning all the delegates of this today's national webinar on gpat and niper tips and tricks all the faculty members from our institution and other institutions and the organizing committee members and the today's research person dr saravanan who is working as Uh, professor in the department of pharmaceutical chemistry having vast experience of almost 15 years in the field of pharmacy and he is coaching the pharma students for the gpat and uh, niper for more than 10 years his experience will be of useful to our pharmacy students as this entrance is of the national level we have planned this conference or uh, this webinar in the national level instead of organizing only to our institution or to the state level so i request all the students to make use of this and try to improve based on these tips and tricks so definitely we hope you will get uh, better ranks in the coming uh, exams so the aim of organizing this webinar is not only our students even all the students of our country should be benefited by using this webinar so i request again all the students please pay your attention and try to grasp as much as possible and even after completion of the webinar if you have any interaction question arises you please contact us we are ready to serve for the all the students so it's a pleasure to organize this webinar and i thank our management on this uh, occasion for giving us this wonderful platform through which uh, we are organizing so many webinars so that our pharmacy students uh, should uh, come up well in the healthcare team so with this view words i welcome all the uh, participants of this uh, webinar and make you of use of this and i uh, welcome dr saravanan and thanks for giving this uh, opportunity to stay, share for our students and i hope uh, you will uh, enlighten the maximum possible uh, uh, tips and tricks to the students uh, who will be participating and who will be benefiting and uh, they try to get the maximum score in the coming gpat and niper exams so with these few words i hand over the session to dr visaka to continue the session thank you Uh, thank you very much sir thank you very much for your welcome address uh, now i request uh, mr m ramesh As associate professor department of pharmacology to introduce our today's speaker dr g sarvanan uh, ramesh sir please 
very good morning all of you first i would like to thank our management and our billard principal dr alagar swami and staff and dear students very good morning and particularly i thank for conducting this kind of session so that uh, around the india or particularly around the global also if they are attending out of india also surely this kind of session helpful a lot so uh, dr sharman sir i personally know he is very kind person and now i uh, go with his uh, whatever the profile uh, he has obtained a phd from pharmaceutical chemistry from jn2 in 2014 and he has obtained masters in pharmaceutical chemistry 2007 cl bed mehta college of pharmacy chennai and he has done his bachelor of pharmacy in 2002 jkkm mrf college of pharmacy kormang uh, Komarai Palam, and his areas of interest are combinational library design, structure-based design, and uh, particularly he has much interest in the chemistry and whether the macromolecule and micromolecule synthesis, all uh, sort of these things. And he has also been a guide for PhD uh, who are aspirants, particularly from the Osmania University Hyderabad, and he has membered from Registered Pharmacists India, Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, India Pharmaceutical Graduation Association, and different associations like APP, APTI. And he's also an editorial member of so anti-infective agents, particularly here, Bentham Science and International Journal, International Journal of Pharmaceutical Chemistry and Analysis. And he is a peer reviewer, many international and national journals. And he's also a chairperson and subject expert, many international and national journals. So he uh, uh, personally, I um, observe, a really dedicated person. Uh, shall we go with the following slide? So, and he has obtained two patents and he published uh, one book and he part of the uh, around 90 publications, both nationally and internationally, and also papers presented both nationally, international conference around 89. And he's also part of the workshops and seminars, conferences around 70. And he has delivered uh, uh, around 10 guest lectures as well. And he guided 33 MPharm students and also 10 BPharm students and is awards and honors best achiever award and also as well as best teacher award and uh, as well as best researcher for different variety of papers from 2007 to 2019 he has issued best papers okay these kind of and also he's been part of college topper in BPharmacy and also achieved distinction in masters in pharmacy and his work experience more than uh, 15 years and also he worked in different colleges, faculty of pharmacy, like KNIMT Pharmacy, Sultanpur, and also Associate Professor HOD in Bapatla College of Pharmacy from 2008 to 16. So he is part of a variety of particular thing is he has patent that is really appreciable thing here. So uh, following slide, can I? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Ramesh, sir, for introducing uh, Dr. G. Saranan. Yes, Dr. G. Saranan is having a huge profile in the uh, very short period of a time. He has achieved many things. Uh, he And importantly, he is a, uh, from last 10 years, he is a uh, coach for GPAT and Niper. To address the and we are very uh, fortunate you. to have you with us, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, to share his expertise in the GPAT and NIPER and uh, inform the student tips and tricks so they can also uh, get the benefit of these tips and tricks and can uh, achieve more and more. Please, sir, start, uh, start your session. So you are muted. So you are not audible. Now am I audible, madam? Uh, yes, sir, you are audible now, please. Yes. So very good morning to one and all. First, I would like to thank our management and our chairman, sir, Sri Yaman Raju Garu, and our vice chairman, sir, Sri Ravi Varma Mantena Garu, for giving this a yeah, big platform to interact with Anna, uh, GPAT aspirants 2021. And I personally, I would like to thank my guru and our principal, Dr. V. Alagar Sami, sir, who is always encouraging me to do such type of activities. 
and giving this on a very big platform for me to interact with on a more than 1500 uh, gpat aspirants so thank you very much sir for giving this and a uh, big opportunities for me to interact with on a uh, in presence of on a uh, big audience and also i would like to thank our organizing committee members who are directly or indirectly involved in organizing this particular national webinar and last but not least i uh, also welcome all the uh, delegates and my dear dear students for this national webinar on gpat and niper tips and tricks so within few days that is on a that we are going to write our gpat 2021 and this is a right time to discuss what are all the tips and tricks we should follow while writing this g pattern niper hope my screen is visible to all yes dr saran it's visible yes sir yes. thank you sir so in this today webinar that we are going to know about what is gpat and what is niper and how we are have to prepare for this gpat and an niper and in particular with an gpat what are all the formats and patterns they are following in gpat examination and what the strategies we should use to score on a gpat and i'm going to discuss about the statistics of the last few years of that gpat examination definitely which will have an a uh, much impact on your gpat examination and which subject we should give an importance and which subject we have to study so we all people have an a uh, uh, different kinds of an uh, opinions so here i am going to give an a uh, weightage in the subject wise manner so which subject having an uh, how many marks they are asking in an uh, gpat examinations all those elaborately we are going to discuss and similarly and neighbor what is the format and pattern of examination in neighbor mm, my tips to all gpat aspirants 2021 and coming 2022 and what the tricks we should follow while studying in an such a national level examinations and we have a vast syllabus in an a pharmacy as well as an a gpat in that which topics based on my experience i am listed out some of the important topics and what are all the things we should do in gpat examination and what are all the things we should not do in that gpat examination that is do's and don'ts in our gpat examinations that we will discuss one by one gpat and niper so the first thing first question will come in mind what is gpat and what is niper why should i write this gpat and niper what the benefit i will get by means of writing this gpat and niper so for all those things the answer will be in the coming slides gpat the abbreviation for an a gpat is graduate pharmacy aptitude test so this graduate pharmacy aptitude test is a national level entrance examination by which we can enter into the m pharma and an a pharma mba program in the various institutes in the nation wide till 2018 this particular examination was conducted by all india council for technical educations from 2019 onwards that graduate pharmacy aptitude test was conducted by a national testing agency and simply we will call that one as an nta which will come under the ministry of a human resource and development and from that 2019 onwards that was particularly conducted by this nta this test the use is that a pharmacy institute can select a suitable pharmacy graduates for the admission into a masters program that is em pharma we will tell this gpat is a 3 hours computer based online test generally in the abbreviation they will call it as an cbt computer based online test and based on this gpat score you are eligible for an a certain scholarship and you can get an a some financial assistance in the field of your pharmacy 
So that is the most important part of that GPAT. As it is an all India level competitive examination, which is conducted by our government of India, we can get an. Uh, we are eligible for if we have an a score, we are eligible for an a few scholarship, and we can get an a financial assistance in the field of an a pharmacy. This particular GPAT score is accepted by all AICTE pharmacy council approved colleges. All the colleges they will accept this particular GPAT score, and there are so many participating institutions. Participating institution is nothing but the institute which will accept this particular GPAT score, and they can. admit their m pharma students based on that gpat score and as far as i know in the last year 800 participating institutions was participated in gpat 2021 and definitely in the coming years also it is increasing so if you are score uh, gpat score you are eligible to uh, get an a seat in this institution based on that merit list but the important thing is if you have an gpat score that you have to apply each and every institute individually there is no such an a common applications okay if you want to apply in an banaras hindu university you have to separately apply if you want in an manipal university you have to apply separately there is no common application for that things so each and every participating institutions we have to apply separately based on our gpat score so who is applying in that particular institute the institute will release a respective cut off gpat score so based on that application what they get received so based on that they will release the cut off gpat score and later depends upon that institutions and their policies the selection procedure will vary so gpat scale they have an weightage they will give one a weightage so for example out of 100 mark depends upon that institution principles it may be on a 75 percentage it may be on a 80 percentage weightage can be given to your gpat score remaining that 20 or on a 25 percentage that weightage will be given for on a group discussion personal interviews all those things okay after finishing this group discussion and personal interviews that the all institute will release their uh, list of candidates based on their The GPAT score, group discussion, and personal interview, and that the final selections will based on all these things only. Your GPAT score, group discussion, and then a personal interviews. And hence, the important thing is what once we got on a GPAT score, that all we think that yes, I got on a GPAT score, and I will definitely get an admission. Yes, definitely you will get an admission in your M Pharmacy program. In that, no doubt. But the important thing is. the thing what in which institute you applied okay whether you applied for an all institute take that an uh, earlier years uh, record statistics based on that which institute i can apply okay so based on that you have to read the details of the admission process so on what basis they are going to uh, that admission process is going to be takes place in that partic uh, particular participating institution so that we must know and another important thing is naipar that is national institute of pharmacy education and research so they will conduct a jee joint entrance examinations so for this gpat b pharmacy completed students and final year b pharm students are only eligible even if you are studying in a third year b pharm you are not eligible to attend that gpat examination but you can start preparing your syllabus then that will be helpful during your gpat and before continuing the things and the participants are reached on a 300 and so many people are trying to join in that meeting but due to that limitations they can't able to join and this program is live in on a youtube already we get sent on a youtube link to your registered email id so hence i am requesting all the participants if any of your friends are trying okay intimate them and they can go to that youtube and the same thing will be live they can watch that uh, webinar in that youtube live yes. i will continue with that session 
how we go to prepare for an gpat and nipa shall i prepare first for an gpat or first i should prepare or i should go get for an nipa so the initial thing is we should concentrate on a gpat why sir we should concentrate on gpat why not on a nipa if you want to apply for an nipa examination you must have an gpat score if you don't have an gpat score or if you are not qualified in gpat you are not eligible to apply in a nipa so if you are aiming for an nipa the first and primary things you must do is we should get a score in a gpat so initially concentrate on gpat because the basic things needed or the eligibility for an gpat examination is if you are studying a fourth year b pharm or if you are a graduate of b pharmacy you are eligible to attend in case if you want to attend nipa you must have an gpat score so hence initially we should concentrate on an gpat and what is the difference between that gpat and nipa what type of questions generally they will ask in gpat and nipa gpat will generally concentrate on your deep subject knowledge of your pharmacy background but nipa will concentrate on your basics of subject and in chemistry point of view if you want to tell means they can concentrate on your stereo chemistry organic chemistry and analytical chemistry so that is the basic difference between your gpat and nipa and based on my experience i was listed out a subject with an a category wise and weightage i was given for an a some subjects and i was arranged that subject from a simple to an a difficult okay i was started with an a pharmacognosy so that is an a very simple subject and it have an a more weightage when i was showing an a pattern of gpat examination subject wise how many questions they are going to ask you people will surprise okay so that pharmacognosy is an a simple subject but they have an a most weightage in that gpat examination and followed by pharmacology pharmaceutical analysis pharmaceutical calculations pharmaceutical jurisprudence biochemistry microbiology biotechnology all pharmaceutical subjects including physical pharmaceutics unit operations biopharmaceutics and dispensing pharmacy nowadays they are giving an importance to clinical pharmacy also followed by an medicinal chemistry as i am a chemistry staff i was given in an last preference that is that means it don't have an weightage like that i am not telling it have an weightage but many of the students they told it is on a difficult subject based on that simple to difficult i was listed out here but this chemistry subject is also having on a so much weightage that i will tell you how we have to avoid this chemistry phobia as well as how we can get on a good score based on these things in the coming slides and our title is gpat and nipa so first now i am going to concentrate mostly on energy part and finally i will come into that nipa because this is our primary aim because if we are eligible in this particular examination then only we can go to that nipa so what is the type of question they can ask in energy part what is the format and as i already told gpat examination is a computer based online test so there is no paper examinations that in front of an a computer you are going to sit and you are going to answer your questions and the duration of that examination is 3 hours in the minute if you want to tell means it is on a 180 minute and the type of question they will ask in your examination is a multiple choice questions out of that four different answer you should select a one best suitable answer so why i am specifically here i am mentioning in a 
best or we can tell it as a most suitable answer many people they get asked on a doubt this particular one sir this particular questions i thought that the two answers are correct it may looks like out of the two also which one is more suitable so that is the thing so it is at a national level entrance examination so they will prepare your questions like that only the question paper setter wants to confuse the pupils so from that how they are answering that particular question they want to know for that purpose they will give an a close related answers that four options will be very close related so from that we should take a most suitable answers we should take a most suitable answer the number of question you are going to answer in that 3 hours is 125 each questions will carry a four marks hence for 125 question the total mark is 500 so you are going to attend the 3 hours computer based online test for 125 questions and if you given a correct answer they will allot a four marks in case if you are giving a wrong answer the most important thing is this particular part only minus 1 so that is a 25 percentage of your correct answer mark so if number of questions if you are giving on a wrong answers then ultimately whatever the mark you are scoring your score will come down that means you yourself you are pulling down your score through these negative marks so till now whatever that competitive examinations you may attend there will not have such type of that negative mark system maybe in your intermediates also you can attend at such type of a multiple choice question entrance examination but there may not be this negative mark systems okay so hence what all your staffs will suggest that attend all questions even now also for our all students when they are going to write on university examinations we will tell that attend all the questions don't miss even a single question that only we will suggest but it is not applicable for this gpat and niper examination why means because of that negative marking systems so when you are writing on a gpat examination system always keep in your mind negative marking system because this negative marking we are pulling down ourselves that we are decreasing our score ourselves so keep those things in mind when you are giving an answers in case if you are not attempted you are not giving an a right answer as well as you are not giving an a wrong answer such type of things there is no marks so you will not whatever the score you are getting that will be maintained okay so these are all the things you should primarily keep in your mind before you attend your gpat as well as an a niper examination so this is an a pattern of an a gpat examinations what strategies i will suggest for you people and what is the statistics what happened in the last year what happened in the last before year so all those things i am uh, summarized for your benefit let me will discuss the strategies if you are looking on a syllabus so that the total syllabus was given in that nta web page you can able to download that one and you can look subject wise they are given the syllabus and it was covered all your four years b pharmacy course whatever you are studying in that four year combinedly you are going to write in the gpat examinations so in case of an university examination as a semester system six months we will study one subject and we will write that exam then we will forget that one next six months another subjects we are studying and we are writing but here all four years starting from your first year organic chemistry in organic chemistry to your final year analysis okay all those things we are going to study and hence it is on a vast subjects as it is on a vast how much time you i need to prepare for this particular examinations so at least before seven months this is on a very least i am telling that's why i mentioned the word at least but it is better to prepare when you are in an a third year itself when you enter in a third year b pharmacy that is a 
correct time to start your GPAD preparations. Then in case if somebody is missed that one, that's why he was here mentioned as at least before seven months. How we can easily get a score in the GPAD examination? If you have a thorough and basic knowledge of pharmacy, that means whatever the subject you are studying, pharmaceutical chemistry, pharmaceutics, pharmacology, and all those things, if you have on a basic knowledge, then based on your basic knowledge, it is easy to, <coughs> sorry, it is easy to understand the rest of subject and you can easily get a score. And you should start your preparation starting with the main subjects such as pharmacology, pharmaceutics, pharmacocracy and pharmaceutical chemistry. So these are all the four major subjects or we can tell it as a pillar of that GPAT examination. So that will going to cover a major portion of your GPAT examination questions. So SAR told only these four subjects, what are the remaining subjects are not uh, necessary to study or it is not important means it is not like that. Don't leave such type of an easy subjects also such as pharmaceutical jurisprudence, dispensing and other calculation because in these subjects only you are going to get a direct questions. When the question was asked directly, every pupil will be able to attend or every pupil can be able to give a correct answer to that particular examination. Why sir, if another people is giving, another student is giving an answer or not, for that what I am going to get? If you understand the system of your GPAT, you will think about this one. If every student is giving a right answer, in that simple question, if you are giving a wrong answer, if you think like that, okay, all students are giving a right answer for an one question and you are giving your wrong for that same question. So what it indicates means it is on a national level ranking based on your marks. So when everybody is getting on a four mark, you are losing on a one mark. So that means you are one step back to your GPAD score. So everybody is scoring, you are losing. So one step back to your GPAD score. In different case, other case you can think, when everybody is not answering, but you are capable to answer, that time you are one step front or forward to your score. Okay, so hence don't think that looking at a questions, it is on a tough or easy like that. If it is on a questions are easy, it is difficult to score difficult to get on a score in GPAT as from my experience I'm telling you. if question is tough it is easy to score because if question is easy it is not only easy for you it is easy for all pupils who are attending that particular examination if the question is tough it is not only for you it is for all okay so during your examination don't bring such type of things in your mind so hence my suggestion is don't leave any easy subjects because that is the area where we can score a very good marks because we will get a direct question from these particular easy subjects. And this is the star, what is that statistics from that last few years I was listed out here for your benefit. Why I was listed here means you must understand what is going on in this um, online GPAT examinations. So looking in that previous years, that is around 2013 to 17, the eligible score is 112 to 118. If you score 112 or 118, you are eligible. You got on a score in that GPAT examination. That means you are qualified. And in the 2018, you look, the score was jumped from 118 to 137. That 19, you look, again, a four mark was added, 141. Then you look in the last year, 163, suddenly 22 marks in the year it was changed. So if you are thinking that uh, 118, some of you are uh, known fellows, they told uh, when I got an 115 and I was qualified. If you are thinking about only 115, I will qualify means it is not possible nowadays because the competition was increased. Everybody from all over the India is fighting to get that GPAT score. So that's why 
year by year the gpat cutoff score was increasing gradually so last year it is 163 and based on my expectations the cutoff score for your 2021 may increased around 180 at least definitely it should touch 175 so your aim must be minimum of that 175 or on a 185 for this gpat 2021 so for your benefits here i was listed out the last year statistics which was given by that national testing agency of government of india why means you must know how many pupils are attending this particular examinations last year if you are looking the number of total registration for this gpat 2020 so for this year till date it was not released that so i was not updated that one So fifty thousand seven forty seven students are registered, and <coughs> out of that fifty thousand seven fifty thousand seven forty seven, that forty eight thousand three sixty students are appeared for this GPAT twenty twenty. So that means you may be a topper in your college. Okay, that means out of that hundred people, you got on a topper when you are attending that G party. So I was a topper. I will get on a definitely score. Yes, you may have on a confidence, but the thing you can keep in your mind: out of hundred, you are competitor and you become a first. But here you are going to compete with on a fifty thousand people. Then you think that means. Almost five hundred times more students you are competing. So like that, you are topper means the other college topper is also writing this particular examination. Like that, you think minimum of some five hundred institute for an approximate I am telling more than that one. So you are competing with all those case. Then you think how much effort you should put to get an GPAT score. So out of that fifty thousand, that generally the score will be allotted to one uh, uh, the qualified candidates. The numbers will come around four thousand to five thousand. That means only ten percentage people approximately will qualify in this uh, GPA twenty twenty one. So from that fifty thousand, you must be on a top five thousand. So you look how much effort if you are putting means you will come into that top five thousand people. For that purpose only, I was listed here. This based on that category wise, and how many number of males, females, and transgenders are applied, and the total is fifty thousand people. So keep in your mind that you are competing with not a hundred people in GPAT examination. You are competing with another fifty thousand people. So your aim is that among that fifty thousand people, how I should come up below hundred or an above five hundred like that. Your aim should be there. so for your easy understanding here again i was listed out the important things from your last year statistics the total number of candidates attended the particular examination is 48360 out of these 48360 pupils attended 4913 students are qualified you look the percentage only 10 percentage so you must be among that 10 percentage students and the general cutoff mark in the gpa 2020 is 163 marks economically weaker section if you are if you are having an that particular section if you are applied your cutoff score is 104 marks if you are coming under the category of your obc your cutoff mark is 131 marks and if you are coming under sc then your cutoff mark is 103 marks and if you are blanks to st then your cutoff mark is 76 marks okay and this national merit ranking that we will call usually as a year all india rank air year we will commonly it was known by everybody year and this year rank will be 
awarded based on how much mark you are scored against the total mark so out of 500 how many marks you are scoring whether you scored 250 marks 350 marks 120 marks based on that they will list out from your highest mark to on a lowest mark and they will give you a rank to 1 2 3 like that they will give when they are allotting that all india rank the most important thing is so they are coming sequentially 1 2 3 like that they will come if some five people they got on a same marks and the rank is starting with an a 6 means so for all five people they will allot a rank as six and the next person who is coming that mark so for example you consider these all five people got on a 150 marks the another people got on a next mark is on a 149 so for 150 they will start with that six all five people they will give six that 149 people he they will not give on a seventh rank because here five member is there so 6 7 8 9 10 they will consider and the person who got on a 149 will get a 11th rank only but all these five people belongs to 6th rank only so after 6 they will not directly go get for on a 7 if one people or many people are scored on a same marks the same rank will be allotted for all those people who scored a similar marks then the next rank they will not allot for our next people how many people is there they will count that rank 6 7 8 9 10 then the 11th rank only will be allot so keep those things in your mind also so the rank is here all india rank is based on the marks which was secured in the gpat examination out of 500 and you people also know about nta score so generally they will ask how much score you are got in gpa 2021 and then they will ask about on a rank so rank i told based on this mark which we scored then how they will calculate this score this is the formula generally they will use to calculate this score 100 into number of candidates appeared in the examination with raw marks equal or less than the candidates so if they had attended on a 48360 in the gpa 2020 so that score thing i can take out of that 48360 how many students are having like you similar marks or less marks how much people they have on a similar marks or less marks so then how we can find out things for example you are scoring on some 500 rank that means what below 500 and those who have on a 500 all they will come in this particular category so from 499 all are having more than you so if you are subtracting that above persons those who score the above you then you can get this particular number and the denominator if you are looking how many people they get appear it is not registered how many people appear because in the last year 50700 people are registered but out of that only 48360 are attended so how many people they get attended that is the more important so that only they will consider in their calculation for you are easy understanding always we will understand when we explained with ana some example so i was taking that example as the person who is scoring a all india rank 220 i was taking that one and i am calculating a nta score for that particular student so 100 there is no change 100 into <coughs> number of candidates appeared in that examination with a raw mark equal or less than the candidates so total number is we know 48360 and he is on a 220 rank so definitely 219 people sir above him so that's why i was minusing that one so whatever the reading we are getting so that one is number of candidates appeared in the examination with raw marks equal or less than that particular candidates and the total number of candidates appeared is 48360 okay so if you are calculating that the score will come as 99.5471 Four six four zero. Why, sir? You are giving so many digits, eight digits, in your 
score card you will get a score like this only they will give one a eight digit score only one okay so that is a 99.5471460 you know the importance of this particular points when you are going to get an admission in another different institute that time you know this important so that much important even a point one mark point one in your score also okay so don't think that one mark is okay what it is going to be happen because of that one mark you may lose 10 rank in consider if you are uh, 200 other people are 201 if some 50 students are having 201 then what you are 50 ranks below to them so one mark or 0.5 marks also will speak many things in your gpad score as well as that all india ranking Hope you understand about ENTA score. This is the model scorecard which they had sent in that year 2020. So in GPA 2021, you are going to get the scorecard like this only. And I was removed here that application number and the roll number. Okay, so here you will get your application number. And here you will get an a roll number that already you people know because already you applied, you may got your application number and roll number from um, 13th onwards. So two days back, they released that NTA. You can download your hall ticket from that NTA website by means of your application number and date of birth. And here your photo will come and your name as per your registration, it will come. Your mother's name will appear here and your father's name will come here and which category you applied and if you are a person with disability here if you given yes it will come yes otherwise it will come as a no and your gender male female or transgender will come here and your date of birth will come here and state of residence whether it is Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu like that the state will come and for all you people because uh, the people uh, who are other than Indians are not eligible to attend this particular examinations. So here that nationality will come as an Indian only. And this is the mark how much you scored in that GPAT 2021 will come. So here I was taken that one as an 184. The maximum mark we are uh, applying for an uh, 500 marks and your score based on that above formula what I was discussed and this is your rank in that all India level. The validity of this particular score is three years. Okay, whatever that mark you are scoring, so that was given in the bad ways here, 184 only. And this is the NTA score, what you got in the bad format. And this is the category wise cutoff mark for Anna qualifying in the GPAT. So far, unreserved candidates, 163. The number of candidates qualified is 1974 out of. 48,000 something. In general, 104, that is economically weaker sections. 489 students are eligible. And backward class, 131, 1350 students. 720 students, which are belonging to ESC, who is scoring 103 are more than that. And 373 students who are scoring 76 are more than that, belonging to that ST categories. So this is the information how they calculated score and what is the need of this GPAT scorecard, all those things that doubt they will give. For your benefit, so 500 marks in university examination, you people may easily scoring on a 95, 96, 99, more than 90. So in GPAT examination, is, is it possible to score 500 out of uh, 500? that is a very difficult because the questions will become like that and the more important thing is negative mark because of negative mark that is very difficult so if you are looking that last year statistics that all india rank one that means those who got on a first track you look score only 315 out of 500 if I want to tell means out of 500, around 63 percentage exactly. If you want to tell means it is on a 63 percentage. So that means in GPAT examination, if you are scoring 63, 
percentage you are a topper that means among 50000 people that 63 percentage if you score you are a topper that means what it indicates it is not necessary to attend all 125 questions in examination what are the things we know based on the things in the coming slide i will tell you how much question you can attend based on the situations based on the things what you know we can select the number of questions what we are going to attend personally my experience i was seen many people they are not qualified in gpat examination because of their wrong strategies their aim is to attend all questions don't keep such things in your mind all 125 questions i need to attend don't keep in mind no need exactly if you want to get an 315 four marks if you pretend correct answer for all question 80 is more than enough if you attend 80 questions correctly 80 into 4 320 you are topper remaining 45 questions you can leave it as such so that means two third of the questions if you are correctly answered means you are the topper then think of the things if you want only score how much you need to attend okay so this two third i am telling if you are not given a any wrong answer for any of the questions but the difference you can look eighth rank you look 293 the difference here is sorry students there is a technical issues so because of the 13 marks your rank is varying in a 200 but here in the top if you are looking 23 only 8 so when your score is coming down down your rank variation will increase the score is coming down your rank variation will increase more so keep those things in your mind and attend that examinations <coughs> what is my strategy to you people to become a gpat topper logically i was telling if you attempted only on a 90 mcqs and out of that 90 mcqs that you are answer 60 questions correctly and you are answer 30 questions wrongly so how much mark you are going to get and what is your rank it will come so simple logic i am taking from a 125 question you think that you attended only on a 90 out of that 90 60 are correct and 30 are wrong so each correct questions we are having and we are going to get on a four marks for 60 correct questions i am going to get on a 240 marks and each wrong answer from my score Minus one, they are going to reduce for thirty wrong answer. I am going to lose thirty marks. So myself, I was 
pull down my score from 242 to 10 and i was not at another 35 questions for the 35 question i am not going to get on any marks so my myself i pulled down my 242 on a 210 so one day i attended on a 90 i got and i'm able to score 210 marks out of 500 and as per the state marks from the gpa 2020 you look my score will be above 500 because 213 is 328 and uh, 500 rank is 200. So if I'm able to score 210, I will be between these 328 to 500. So I was entered with the All India rank 500. So that is the strategy what I was telling to you people. Don't try to attend all 125 questions. Try to attend. Only I'm not telling an a 90 based on your things. That if you know confidently, then yes, you can go again. Otherwise, Try to minimize the number of questions what you are going to attend. And as far as from my experience for this GPAT 2020, above 175 is the safe to qualify in the GPAT 2021. But try to score minimum of your 225 to get a better rank. If your rank is better, you will be placed in a better college. See, this is the logical calculation of your mark. So if you attempted 50 questions, what will happen? If you attempted 60, what will happen? If you attempted 100, what will happen? So logically, I was calculated the marks for all these attempted questions starting from a 60 to 100. So 50 to 100. So taking that 50, out of that 50, if you answered 35 question rightly your mark is 114 and 15 is wrong you are going to last 15 so total the net score is 125 and ultimately 125 is your not qualified marks in gpat i'm taking the general category as other things and i'm telling it is not qualified the rest of categories are not coming only general category always aim in that particular thing 60 question if you attempted in that 60 35 are right and 25 are wrong okay for right question you got 140 wrong question Again, sorry for the disturbance, my dear students. There is an uh, network issue. Uh, sir, yes, uh, sir can you repeat the calculations, sir? Because what happened? Uh, you disconnected before only. You got yes, disconnected. Yes, sir. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yes, sir. Starting from that 50 marks, 50 questions you are attending. In that 50 questions, if you are answered 35 questions rightly and you are answered wrongly, you yeah, have 15 questions. Okay, for right question, you will get on a 140 marks. For wrong questions, you will get on a minus 15 marks. So your net score will become 125. And in case if you attended on a 60 questions and my assumption, if you are rightly answered 35 and wrongly answered 25 means your net score will come as 115. And you are attempted 70 questions, 40 are right and 30 are wrong and your net score will become 130. And in case if you attempted on a 80 questions, in that 45 are wrong and 35 are 
sorry 45 are right and 35 are wrong and your net score will become 145 so this red colored marks are highlighted as an red line red zone that means you will not score a marks you will not get the uh, qualified in the gpad score this yellow color yes you are in between that may or may not okay always don't be in that red zone area yellow zone try to be in that green zone so far you are easy things only i was highlighted here as a red zone yellow zone and this is an a green zone in green zone you look from 80 i was starting from that 80 if you are answered 50 are right and 30 are wrong and your score you look 170 if you attempted 90 questions, 50 are right, wrong are 40, then your score is 160. And 90 questions, 60 are right, 30 are wrong, your score is 210. Here you look, you also attempted on a 90 questions, your friend is also attempted on a 90 questions, let us assume. You are answered rightly for on a 50 questions, but your friend is answered rightly for on a 60 questions. Only 10 questions difference. But the score you look, 160, here 210. So that is the importance of that negative marking system. You may thought that only one marks are like that. One question if you are wrong means you will think that one mark. But you think that another person is getting a right means he is above to you five marks. He is going to get four marks for right answer. You are going to last one. So that one will also order. So one question, if you are wrongly added, means the another people may get five marks. So 10 questions here difference, 50 marks. So totally 210. So keep in your mind how many questions rightly you are answering. So that is a more, more important. Same questions, number of questions. Number of attempted questions is not important. Number of correctly answered question that is that will decide you are fat in that GPAT examination. And in case consider 100 questions, 55 are right, 45 are wrong, you may end up with 175. Then again, here also you look. You attempted only 90, your friend attempted 100. You are ended with 210. He is ended with 175. So don't look the number of questions attempted. You look the number of questions rightly answered. Even though you are attempted on a less number of questions, but you are correctly given answer for on a many questions. Okay. So that is on a more important things to get on a good score in the GPAT examination. And if you attempted 100 questions, 70 are right and 30 are wrong and you may end up with the score of 250. So my dear students, don't look for number of question attempted, look for the highest number of rightly attempted questions. Your aim should be, I should attempt 90 or 100, it should not be like that. I should correctly attempt minimum of 80 or 90 questions. If you are capable to attempt 80 questions rightly, then you are the topper, I will tell you. You are come above that 100 rank, all India rank. So keep your aim as an 80 questions. In your examination, if you are thinking that 80 are confidently, if you are right, then my suggestion is please don't attempt the rest of 45 questions. Because of that, each and every negative marks you are pulling you are down to the score so 80 is correct means don't attend the rest of questions my dear dear students and i am dividing the phases of that gpat examination into one of four major categories the three hours examinations i am divided from my experience into one of four different categories so what i will do or my suggestion for you people is when you are starting, you enter that examination hall and the time was started and you are start answering your questions. That initial phase, I will call it as a phase one. And the coming phases, I will tell it as a phase two, phase three, phase four. Initially, what you should do means read the questions carefully. If you are not going to attend means one time, if you are reading means enough. 
but if you decided to attempt that particular question one time reading question is not sufficient because our mind will read the question fastly and we may miss some important things in your questions a very simple example i will tell you as i am a chemist i will tell an example from an biochemistry which of the following one is not a polysaccharide the question which was asked in an examination is which of the following one sugar is not an polysaccharide the option may be starch but what we thought means that not we may not read when reading fastly so polysaccharide immediately our mind will tell you yeah, starch then we will put that starch as an a correct answer but actually you think that yes i got an a four marks in that things but my dear student you lost here yeah, my one mark because they are not asking which is an a polysaccharide they asked which is not an polysaccharide okay so why i am telling if you are going to answer means again you can read you have an enough time 125 question 180 minutes for each question you are going to get approximately 1.63 minutes so you have an enough time read it read completely one time two times three times if you are confidently you are going to answer that particular questions then you answer it so like that in the first phase what you should do means whichever question you are thinking confidently correct as 100 percentage i know this particular question this is the answer such type of question you can answer in your phase 1 that means from the four options you confidently know yes c is the correct answer or b is the correct answer or a is the correct answer or d is the correct answer whichever question you know confidently that particular question you can answer in your first phase and some people they told also sir first few questions i was get an afraid because first 15 questions what i was read i didn't know anything don't get tense my dear students because that question will be shuffled and it will be distributed whatever the question initially you may get is it is uh, that particular subject you may not concentrate at okay so don't lose your hope 25 question if you are not answered also don't lose your hope my dear students you may get the subject what you concentrated in the next coming 100 questions so peacefully be relax even 30 questions be relax then ultimately the next coming questions may be known by you so the important thing is we should be in an a stable mind and it should be in an a relaxed mind to attend that correct the next coming question so don't expect the first few question itself we should answer like that depends upon that shuffling you may get an a one one subject like that so our aim is not 125 that our aim is only an a 80 or an a 90 so that hope will be there in that last questions also so don't lose your hope so in the first phase only attempt the question which you know confidently that is the phase one i was telling so from the four option itself you know correct then phase two so now you read at all 125 questions and you came to know that 60 questions you are correctly answered shall i leave it as a sum no then you can come to your phase two so in the phase two what my suggestion means from the four option you don't know now i am telling you to follow the elimination method what is that elimination method sir means read that questions and option out of that four you don't know the correct answer but you know which will is not a correct answer that means some particular answer you know that is not come so the same thing i can take which is not on a what is that polysaccharide okay so starch you know polysaccharide so you know starch is not an answer then out of that four you remove that starch you will get on a three then another thing glucose if they are given option you know glucose is on a monosaccharide 
Okay, so then we can remove that one also. So that means my question will be like that. Which of the following one is an a pentasaccharide? You can think it. Which is the following one is an a pentasaccharide? So starch we know polysaccharide. I am cutting that option, eliminating that starch. Glucose I know it is an a monosaccharide, but I am removing that one also. I don't know what is the example for an a pentasaccharide. But I know starch is a polysaccharide, and I know glucose is an a monosaccharide. But out of that four, I removed, I eliminated another two options. Now I'm going to select it from two. Selecting from your four option is difficult, but selecting from your two is an easy one. So, but they are given another four option, but I don't know exactly what is the answer for another particular question. But from my studies and things. That I know that starch is an a polysaccharide and glucose is an a monosaccharide. So hence these two things will not come under the category of a pentasaccharide. So now I'm having another two options. So from that two, I'm going to select. Okay, so that is called as an elimination method. So like that, you can again read the missed questions. Eighty attempted, remaining forty-five will be there. That forty-five in the phase two, you can go like that. How many questions you are able to answer in that elimination method? Try to answer. Then again, coming to the next phase from starting, not attempted. So by this way, you can attempt at some ten questions. You can think. So ninety you attempted, remaining thirty-five is there. So that thirty-five questions are coming to your phase three. And in that, I am telling you people to follow your logical thinking. So earlier from your four, we eliminated two. Now in the phase three, at least one you try to remove and logically think it. So what may be the correct answer? By means of that logical thinking from your three, I am going to select any one. So that is the phase three. So think that you attempted some five questions. Eighty, ten, five, ninety-five. You answer. Now remaining is thirty questions. That will come into your phase four. Either you skip it because already you know eighty is right, and the remaining, if you are getting fifteen, correct, it's well and good. If you losing also, your score will somewhat less. That's all. So three twenty fifteen gone means three not five. It is on a good score. And the remaining thirty five, don't try to attempt. Skip it. Otherwise, you can go and with a high logic method. There is no other way. From the four, you should select an any one. So my suggestion: if you attempt a many questions in an a phase one, in the phase four, you try to skip in that is enough to get an a good score. So this is the thing from my experience. I was divided the phases. So from your initial, you try to attempt the. Confident questions, which you confidently know that answer for your phase one, and second phase you try to attempt that elimination method. Which question you can apply? It is not possible for all. Some questions you can try it. That question you can attempt in phase two, and phase three try to attempt some more questions, and phase four better leave it. Yes, this is the major part, and so many people you are waiting for that particular one. Subject wise. Weightage. Which subject I can give on a more weightage? Which subject many marks will come? Okay. Let's see. What are all the subject we should concentrate for on a GPAT? And this is the subject-wise weightage which was declared by NTA in that thirteenth uh, day before yesterday. From your pharmaceutical chemistry, you are going to get. Thirty-eight questions out of a uh, one twenty-five questions, and in that form, as you take, you are going to get another thirty-eight questions out of one fifty-two, and in another pharmacology, you are going to get twenty-eight questions out of one twenty-five, and calculus, you are going to get another ten questions, and other subjects, you are going to get another eleven questions. So your weightage for an a pharmaceutical chemistry is 152 marks out of 500. In pharmaceutics also 152 out of 100 marks, and pharmacology 112 marks out of 500. From calculus you are going to get an a 40 marks out of 500. Other subjects you are going to get 144 out of 500. 
so this is the subject wise weightage from year 2019 and 20 also they get asked in a similar pattern so by means of analyzing the statistically i was prepared that one and 13th that nta released on a paper weightage in that also the same thing was mentioned so this will guide you which subject you should focus okay you look cognacy 10 questions 40 marks the syllabus was how much in cognacy if you are thorough with that one 40 marks are in your pocket okay so think of that one pharmaceutical chemistry means pharmaceutics means it is not on a single subject that the next slide i'm going to tell what are all the subject in coming under that category of your pharmaceutical chemistry what the subject will coming under the category of your pharmaceutics all those things i was given in this particular slide pharmaceutical chemistry which includes physical chemistry organic chemistry pharmaceutical inorganic chemistry medicinal chemistry biochemistry even pharmaceutical analysis is also included in this particular category only put together all these subjects you will get an 38 questions and you are going to get 152 marks in this particular category pharmaceutics includes physical pharmacy pharmaceutics microbiology biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics pharmaceutical engineering dispensing and hospital pharmacy pharmaceutical management microbiology put together all these subjects you are going to get an again a 50 <coughs> 38 question and 152 marks pharmacology including pathophysiology clinical pharmacy and therapeutics you are going to get uh, 28 question which belongs to 112 marks pharmacognosy it is only on a one subject 10 question you are going to get 40 marks other subject includes human anatomy and physiology, pharmaceutical jurisprudence, biotechnology and others. From that you are going to get an 11 questions, 44 marks. Okay, sorry, here it is on a typographical error, it is 44, not 144. It is on a 44 marks. Till now, we know what is GPAT, what is the pattern, what strategy you should follow, what is the statistics from the last year examination, all those things we discussed. Now let me will move to the next one, that is NAPER, National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research Joint Entrance Examination. What type of format, what type of questions they will ask it? What is the pattern of examination in the NAPER? So like GPAT, it is also a computer-based online test only. No paper examinations. Their GPAT examination is three hour. The NAPER examination is only two hour, 120 minutes. Like GPAT, here also you are going to answer for a multiple choice questions only. The number of questions asked in GPAT is three and there, but here only 200. And the each right answer you will get on a one mark. So total mark for NAPER is 200 only. For each wrong answer here also there is a negative mark system. Same like 25 percentage. There out of four marks you are going to lose one. Here one mark you are going to lose minus 0 0.25. If you are not attempted any questions you are marked. You are not going to lose any marks. So this is the pattern of NAPER. What's the strategy to crack NAPER? The most important thing is speed. Because two hours, you are going to answer 200 questions. So speed, that will be matter for an NAPER. And in the NAPER, they will mostly ask you a basics and application type of your questions only they will ask. And along with that subject, you may also have your 25 general knowledge questions also which day is celebrated as a yoga day, some examples. Marketed brands of another drug molecule, Nobel Prize winners, they can ask. They can ask a sports related questions also. And the questions may be from your aptitude type of your questions also will come. Some questions may be from your synonyms and an acronyms also will be there. So that is the thing we should concentrate 
along with our subject knowledge we should concentrate all these things in order to score a good mark in your paper for easy understanding i was compared that gpat and naiper in an in this particular slide usually the gpat examinations will be conducted in the month of january but this time due to this pandemic situation it is conducted in the month of february i think coming 27th you are going to write your gpat 2021 naiper examination will be usually in the month of june and gpat is conducted by a national testing agency naiper jee will be conducted by an national institute of pharmaceutical education and research b pharm pass out students or final year b pharm students are eligible for gpat examination for naiper the persons who is having gpat score eligible gpat score and who is a final year b pharmacy or a pharma graduate is eligible for an naiper the registration fee for an gpat is 1600 for general category and for female sc st 800 rupees in case of a naiper for general category there is an 3000 rupees and for sc or st 1500 both gpat and naiper are objective type questions that is multiple choice questions from your four answers you are going to select a most suitable answers i am not telling you a correct answer most suitable answer number of question in gpat is 125 naiper is 200 the total mark is 500 in gpat in naiper it is 200 duration is 3 hours for gpat and naiper it is 2 hours for each question you will get a 1.44 minute in gpat examination that is approximately 86.4 seconds for an each question but in naiper you look only 36 seconds for an each questions so that speed will matter in naiper negative marking in both the case 25 percentage marks are negative and monthly stipend if you are qualified in gpat based on gpat score if you join and i am pharmacy or pharma mbo programs you may get around 12400 as your monthly stipend so for two years if you are calculated it will come around 3 lakhs rupees you are going to get by means of your stipend in gpat subject wise question i already told you chemistry how many questions all those things but naiper if there is no subject wise it will include your gk also in naiper the results will be declared with all india rank along with your marks but in g naiper only all india rank not marks will be disclosed your gpat score is valid for an 3 years but your naiper score is valid only for an 1 year if you are qualified in naiper that particular year itself you should join in that naiper institute otherwise your score will becomes invalid It's coming to our particular topics tips and tricks so that is the title i was given so what are all the tips i was suggesting for you people to crack gpat and anna naiper starting from the preparation i was giving anna some tips that will be useful for those who are studying anna third year b pharmacy second year or even some first year students also it will be very helpful so the thing is only last 6 months 7 months even that 7 months if you take an also in that 7 month your study should be regular or routine every day you must spend some time for that gpat examination along with your other university studies every day you have compulsory you should spend some time for your gpat preparations my suggestion is don't study only one subjects mix that subject and study today one subject tomorrow one subject like that mix that subject and study because otherwise only one subject if you are studying you may get a bore okay so mixing of subject is a very good strategies you should be thorough on you should understand that concept because you are not going to write on some essay type of a question in a gpat and naiper out of that four you should select a best suitable answer most suitable answer you should select so logical thinking all those things i told if you understand that concept then only it is possible 
don't rush when you are starting preparing okay so like that fast 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 if you are going rushing you may not understand that concept you may easily forget how much fast you are doing that much fast because seven month or eight months or one year one and a half years before if you are starting preparations whatever you are studying it should be reflected in that after one and a half years also we should remember then don't rush it because starting time is the best time for understanding that concept gaining that concept so initially you are going to gain that concept so spend more times to get that concept every day try to solve a yeah, old question papers at least 50 questions per day that will evaluate yourself that is for an self evaluation mostly go on with an old question papers whenever you are preparing for an gpat try to prepare your yeah, notes make your notes and that notes become should be very handy for your last time revisions because last one month or one and a half months you are going to revise in that case it is not possible to revise all the subjects if you don't have on a notes in a book if it is having on a 20 or 30 pages you should summarize those things in a within two or three pages then it will be easy for that revisions memorize regularly which subject you are having problem that particular subject you can memorize regularly repeatedly today you are studying classification tomorrow also you study that particular classification then you can be able to memorize last one month will be on a very crucial for an gpat and nipar and in that time don't study anything newly only revise the all the subject what you prepared otherwise no use of your whatever you prepared and here at least if you are not possible in one month last 15 days that revise don't study anything newly focus only on you don't compare with your friends or others preparation he is preparing on a chemistry more time he is spending maybe he is weak in that chemistry that's why he is spending more times if you are strong in that one there is no need of spending you more time in that particular subject which subject you are weak if you are weak in two ticks you can concentrate on that two ticks he has no need of comparison one fellow can study the one particular topic in a short period the other fellow can complete the same topic in a longer period so don't compare with that other pupils okay only focus on you what you are doing that one you can focus don't get panic before the examinations just relax open your mind and try to give your examination don't get the panic first 15 question i don't know 25 question i don't know don't get panic other 90 questions are there my dear students other 100 questions are there and all those 100 questions may be answered by you so don't get panic initially my dear students and this is the most important thing nowadays what sir you are telling away from our friends and mobile yes when you are preparing you try to switch off your mobiles no sir not at all possible means at least switch off your internet connections if you are getting a phone from your parents at least switch off your internet connection otherwise whatsapp message continuously will come okay so that will distract you from your studies friends it includes both boyfriends and girlfriends be away from them because you are concentrating on your gpat examinations think only your goals not others what is your goal i want to get a gpat score and i want to study that m pharmacy in a very good national institutes so think of that one don't compare with that other people their family background will be different his aim may be different okay so hence don't compare with others only think about your goals where start study where if you are this uh, if your mind is not free don't study when you have get on a peace of mind that time you can start preparing your studies think always about your parents why they are sending you to study what you are doing how much effort they are putting your parents to send you to that college think all those things in your mind you will get the things so based on that you can study well the most important thing I'm concentrating on studies, sir. I'm skipping my food. Is it advisable? Not at all, my dear students, because 
wealth and health is more important health health is and more and more important if you are in a good health you are able to attend the examinations so eat on the correct time even set the alarm also night 8 o'clock or whatever the time you want to take set an alarm eat spend the time for eating and then only you will be in a good health if you are in a good health then only you can spend your time for an studying and you can able to write your examination schedules as many people you will prepare an time table yes well and good prepare but in case if you are unable to complete anything in your time table don't get disappoint okay sometimes it will happen not only for you everybody we may have our schedule but due to some reasons it may not be completed so don't think about that three schedules don't think about that failure of that schedule also before sleep okay today you completed the things before going to on a sleep go on lay down on that bed and think about all the things what you studied in that particular day one by one okay this one i studied recall it recall it at one point of time if you are unable to recall okay be cool and go ahead for on a sleep next day morning wake up and take that particular books or on a notes and you can try to get an answer which you are unable to remember group discussion this is our most important thing my dear students never forget that particular topic or on a chapter when you are discussing with others you will never forget okay only you are studying and you are discussing with your friends or in a groups you will never forget such type of thing so group discussion is more more important and for this particular thing i was try, uh, trying to tell on a one success stories one of my students he is an a very normal student okay even we can tell an a below average also i can tell he is an a below average student but he is involved in the group discussion with an a some of his friend and he is able to get an a all india rank of an a 220 in the gpat 2018 he is an a below average student many people got surprised how he is able to get that particular score a particular rank when i was interacting with him he told us sir that we will every day morning when we are free we will discuss sir so during that group they have on a four members they discuss the whatever he studied in the day he will discuss other person also will discuss like that four people whatever they studied in the previous day they will try to discuss so what happened you are not studied that other three topics but you are gaining some knowledge from that one when we are discussing like that if that question is coming it may strike yes that particular topic we get discussed there on the day so we may get an a some answer from that one okay so group discussion is on a more more important if you are feeling sleepy in a day time what i can do sir simply you can drink some on a cold water i'm not telling an ice water less likely cold water you can drink and you walk for an a few minutes definitely you will get an a uh, relief from that sleepy the more important is revision you studied all the things till last minute if you are studying newly 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 if you are not revising it is on a very difficult to score on a marks so it is very important to revise that previously learned chapters memory tips write important points on the top of the page always in your book whatever the topic you are studying out of that whole page whichever you are thinking that important that particular thing you can write in the top of page why sir when you are revising no need of studying that all pages top itself you are having an important points that one you can look it and you can go because in the examination they are going to ask such type of points only sir told to underline all that important points in book line by line if you are underlined no use okay so only very important things you can write in the top of the page that will be very helpful when you are going to revise your gpat examinations always study medicinal chemistry and pharmacology subject simultaneously these two subjects are interrelated many things you are going to study commonly so my suggestion is study pharmacology and medicinal chemistry simultaneously only 
and room walls. Make your charts, flow diagrams, tables, the structures, mechanisms, all those things. You can make it like a flow charts like that and you can paste in your room. Whenever you are free in that things, by looking at charts, you can be able to remember. By looking at one particular things repeatedly, ultimately that will come and that will register in our mind. That will be a very helpful. If any particular topic repeatedly the questions are coming means please put some extra effort because definitely you are going to get the questions from that particular topic and put your extra effort. Try to solve more and more questions and always practice that calculation based questions that will make you speed in your examinations. Some people are having a more visual memories. So hence draw your diagrams and link some learned points in that visual memories and hence in that examination you can easily capable to remember those things. One question bank try to prepare yourself and flashcards, charts and new technologies you can use. Again here also I want to share my uh, one of my friends experience in that year uh, uh, 2002 when I was on a UG student B pharmacy when I was studying one of my friend in the third year itself, we tried at the time, third year students also eligible to attend the GPAT examinations and we people attended that GPAT examinations. So what my friend done means, that time we mean the postcard is available. Okay, so he made that postcard for an each drug molecule in a chemistry. For example, paracetamol, paracetamol structure, what is its IUPAC name? what is the starting material it is used for its synthesis if any name reaction is involved that particular name reaction mechanisms in another one word and uses an important side effect is there for a particular drug all those things he completed for a one drug in another one postcard like that for another some 450 to 500 drugs he used on a 500 postcards what's the use of that one Whenever he is moving or whenever he is in traveling or when he is uh, sitting in some places, uh, so that time <coughs> he will use that postcard to read it. He revise it. And he got on a, that time itself, in the third year itself, he got on a 94 percentage score in the GPAT. And he, uh, after completion of that B pharmacy, he started studying in an, uh, Banaras Hindi University and now he is settled well. So that time he used on a postcard. Nowadays, you people are having on a mobiles. Use it, that use the technologies. Okay. So how you are sharing on a so many things instead of sharing on a some unwanted things, you can share on your education related things. So many GPAT oriented groups are there that you can join it. And whatever the things you are studying, that materials or one drug molecule, if you are preparing any one thing, make a take on a photo and keep it ready. When you are having on a free time, say, open that one and you can try to remember all those things. That will be have on a good impact on your GPAT examination. So these are all my tips for you people in for that GPAT examinations. What is the trick we have to follow in that GPAT and NAPAR? So I told you people to prepare on a chart. So this is the model chart which was prepared by me for your carbohydrate introductions. You look, this particular chart covers starting on a carbohydrate, how it was classified for each category, what are all the examples? Even we can make note maltose. What is the composition? Alpha D glucose plus alpha D glucose. What is the linkage which was present? 1, 4 alpha glycosidic linkage. Like that also you can note it. All those things, if you are looking at any standard biochemistry book, the thing will come around here 30 to 40 page. I was given in a single chart that whatever the point I told that if you want, you can write in on another page, maximum two page, but 
no need of studying that 20 30 pages during your revision time that means starting itself i am not telling you to study these things yourself you study and you prepare because when you study and when you prepare you can easily understand when others are prepared at that time it is difficult you don't know what is the things i myself i prepare but i know what is maltose what is lactose what is the composition of maltose what is the composition of your lactose but when some people are prepared and if you are using that one he know <coughs> that <coughs> sorry what is maltose and what is lactose but you don't know if questions are coming you may lost that marks okay so like that for all possible things try to make a charts tables flow charts like those things that is the most important tricks we can apply in the gpat examinations if we are preparing like that we can easily remember in the examination also if it is on chart type of things we can easily remember in that examinations and that will be very very helpful for our things so here you look carbohydrate initially based on solubility it was classified the number of sugar molecule it was classified the number of carbon atoms it was classified based on the reducing property like that everything you should try to cover in that chart itself or table itself now another important thing is usage of mnemonics what sir mnemonics maybe you, many people you can come across this particular word it is nothing but mnemonics is a pattern of letters ideas or associations which assist in remembering something when we want to remember something if you are using here some letter some idea some associations that type of things we can call it as a mnemonics and it is a instructional strategies designed to help students improve their memory we can improve our memory by means of using this particular mnemonics the basic mnemonics are using a keywords or rhyming words or acronyms if you are using some keywords some rhyming words or acronyms for remembering something so that one only we will call it as a mnemonics i will explain with an some example then you people came to know what is the importance of these mnemonics so the previous slides i shown you on a classification of on a carbohydrates so how i can remember that a big classification so is it possible i am studying but i am forgetting that particular classification sir how i can remember sir means by means of that mnemonics only i was remembering the things so i am using this particular word based on that institute and festival background so what i was using is get r a x l geetam so that particular word i was using to remember the examples coming under the category of a yeah, monosaccharides how i am remembering this particular thing means get r a x l ramu arrived christmas leaves so ramu is coming for on a christmas leave from where from a yeah, geetam i very very many people you know it is on one of that university which was present in ana andhra pradesh geeta university so you can easily remember so ramu is coming for his native to get something from a yeah, geeta university so based on that i was remembering so that first letter i was taken uh, each first letter indicates the particular example in that particular category get the g indicates glyceraldehyde which is a yeah, Three carbon sugar molecule, triose sugar. E T indicates it is an tetrasaccharides, erythrose and triose. Then R A X L. These four indicates a pentasaccharide. R indicates ribose. A indicates arabinose. X indicates xylose. L indicates lysose. Geetam, three Gs and two As. Okay, so totally eight. hexo sugars are there what are all those things glucose galactose glucose i indicates edose t indicates tallose 
A indicates allos, another A indicates altros, M indicates manos. So that based on that Gita, I can be able to remember this particular classification of a carbohydrate. So I was told it is an uh, get Ramu arrived X must leave Gita. You can use some other things which is known by you, which is easy for you. So Sar is told only remembering the mnemonics. You are remembering this mnemonics. If you don't know what is R, what is G, no use. You must know what is that R indicates, what is that G indicates. You must study all these things for remembering only we are using these mnemonics. This is an another examples from the same carbohydrates that uh, mucopolysaccharides, if you want to remember. There are uh, five important mucopolysaccharides and based on the hospital background, I am remembering that five uh, different uh, mucopolysaccharides. KH, so that is kid hospital, children's hospital. Okay, kid hospital. The qualification of a child specialist is DCH. So that's why I was remembering that kid hospital DCH. Kid hospital, the qualification of your doctor is DCH. What is that K? Keraton sulfate. What is that H? Heparin. What is that D? Dermaton sulfate. What is that C? Chondroitin sulfate. What is that H? Hyaluronic acid. So by means of that KH DCH, kid hospital DCH, I am able to remember mucopolysaccharide at any point of your time. The another example from your medicinal chemistry, I was telling sedative hypnotics classification. There are six important sedative hypnotics is there. How I can remember that sedative hypnotics? By means of your course background, what I can remember, sir? BBA, CAA. You people all may know that it is on a bachelor degree BBA and you are aware of that CA, Chartered Accountants. This another A indicates admission. So BBA, Chartered Accountant Admissions. Bachelor of Business Administration, Chartered Accountant Admission. So if I'm remembering that BBA, CAA, I can able to tell all six different categories of your sedative and hypnotics at any point of your time. B indicates barbiturates. Another B indicates benzodiazepine. A indicates acyclic hypnotics containing nitrogen. C indicates cyclic hypnotics containing nitrogen. A indicates alcohol and aldehydes. Another A indicates acetylene derivatives. So no need of getting confusion. When we are studying on so many classification, it is difficult to remember. By means of these mnemonics, I can easily remember those all those things. And this is from your Chutik's point of view. Tablets, four different types of ana tablets. I can remember by using that uh, uh, temple or pilgrimage background. OTTT, -T -T, that is one time Tirupati travel. O indicates oral tablets for ingestion. T indicates tablets used for oral cavity. Another T indicates tablets used for special purpose. The last T indicates tablets used in the form of solution. So those are all the four different types of yeah, tablets. And similarly, for tablets which are used for ingestion, I can be able to remember based on that institutional background. <coughs> CMC, CS, FRDC. That is Chennai Medical College Campus Selection for formulation research development by various company. So that's a Chennai Medical College Campus Selection by or for formulation research development by various companies. So C indicates compressible tablets, M indicates multi-compressed tablets, C indicates chewable tablets, another C indicates chocolates or super coated tablets, S indicates sustained release tablets, F indicates film coated tablets, R indicates repeat oxygen tablets, D indicates delayed oxygen tablets, C indicates controlled release tablets. Similarly, exhibients used in tablets, we can use by means of an cricket background. That is DD, WCCS, flag, bad. That is Delhi Daredevils, winning captain, Chennai Super Kings, flag, bad ground. Okay, D, diluents, D, disintegrants, W, wetting agents, C, colorants, C, co-processed exhibients, S, sweeteners, 
flag f flavorants lubricants anti diarrheans sorry anti adherents gliadins bad binders adsorbents dissolution modifiers by means of this particular cricket background i can able to remember whatever that exhibients which are used in tablet formulation at any point of time and similarly glidans what are all the different glidans we can use by means of an a political background tscm that is tamil nadu state chief minister or here we can take it as an a telangana state chief minister also okay t talk s starch c colloidal silicon dioxide cellulose calcium stearate m magnesium oxide magnesium carbonate magnesium stearate and this is the way because many people you are aware and you think that medicinal chemistry or chemistry is on a tough subject what i can do sir how i can easily study that particular thing so for that things from your medicinal chemistry i taken on a one particular drug how we you can easily remember that structure how you can easily remember that starting material for the synthesis how you have to remember that scr how you have to remember that mechanism of action all those things with this particular example i am going to give the things triprolidin hydrochloride that is an a drug i was taken and how i can remember the structure from the name itself i am going to remember tri we know tri means three so this particular structure is having an a three string system one is benzene ring another one is pyridine the another one is an a pyrrolidin ring pro pr indicates pyrrolidin ring you look i highlighted pyrrolidin ol indicates toluene you look there is a presence of a toluene ring idin indicates there is a presence of a pyridin so three ring system which is on a pyrrolidin which is a toluene the another one is on a pyridin you look all those things you got it then you can easily remember the structure no need of mug up from the name i am telling almost for majority of the drugs we can use this particular technique from the name we can able to write this structure okay sir from the name i was remembering the structure next thing what i have to do you must remember the starting material and some important name reaction in that particular category how i can remember all drugs 400 500 drug synthesis sir simple thing by means of your retro synthesis break the structure and try to remember the starting material So I was dividing this structure into one of four parts: pyridine part, toluene part, methylene part, and pyrrolidine part. Initially, what I am going to do means I am going to take this toluene part and pyrrolidine part along with that formaldehyde. I am going to react by means of an a Mannich reaction. I am going to get this particular part. Then through a Grignard reagent, I am going to add this pyridine part. Let's see how. You look. that toluene part i was taken as acetophenone derivatives methylene part i taken as a formaldehyde pyrrolidin water molecule is removing and it is an a manich reaction and i got that particular part then grignard reagent i am using pyridin and it is going on addition reaction then when we are doing on a hydrolysis we are getting oh and h then by means of an a dehydration i can get an a unsaturated compound that is nothing but triprolidin this is the uses and uses common uses means you can leave it if you have any specific use try to remember that particular specific use and generally the triprolidin hydrochloride e forms are more potent than z form such type of thing if you are coming across please note down because these things they will ask in your gpat examination then mechanism how we have to remember sir so for that i was taking that example as a h1 antagonist so h1 antagonist mechanism how i can remember so generally that a phospholipase is activated that may leads to a characteristic reaction of a histamine through ip3 dag all those things so these histamine antagonist generally blocking the action of a that phospholipase activation if phospholipase c is not activated no ip3 and dag is formed if it is not formed the characteristic reaction of a histamine such as bronchi constriction gig smooth muscle constriction vasodilatation and increased heart rate will not happen by that way it is acting so like that you can make a flow chart 
that you can easily remember during your examination, my dear students. And this is the metabolisms. Okay, always try to remember what is the amino group is there, what type of reaction will happen. If oligate is there, what type of general metabolic reaction it will happen. So that you can study in genobiotic metabolisms. Okay, so generally catecholamines will undergo um, metabolism through monoamine oxidase and catechol O methyl transferase. So this monoamine is getting oxidized, hence we will get an oligate group here. And here, that hydroxyl group is getting methylated and it undergoes an O methylation. So that is the way we should remember metabolisms. For ACR, try to prepare a, a short type of things. General structure, you can write it. From that general structure, you can add what are all the possible modifications. So four modifications are possible for H1 antagonist. One is RL group modification, nature of AX we can modify, terminal nitrogen atom can modify, alkyl chain can be modified. In that what are all the things modification is happen, which is increasing the activity, which is decreasing the activity, what will happen to duration, like that all those things you can try to note like in enough diagrams that will be very useful during your examinations. So I think the most important thing is important topics. What are all the important topics we can cover for GPAT examination? Just reading MCQs from the book will not give you a success in your GPAT examination. That will give only on a sometimes. So always try to study your standard textbooks for all subject. Try to study in the standard textbooks. Then you can go get for an MCQs. How you have to solve your MCQs means yourself you can try to get your answer for that particular questions. Refer the books, one question, don't directly go for answers. If one question is reading, take that book and try to get an answers. Okay, got a correct answer. And the important thing is rest of three options is there. Try to make question yourself for that three options. Three wrong answers also. Prepare your question yourself. That means one question if you are studying means at your time four questions you are prepared. Okay, so hence don't go get with a ready-made notes answers. Prepare, try to get your answer for that multiple choice question yourself. And three wrong answer, try to prepare a question yourself because the same question will not be repeated in your GPAT examination, my dear students similar type of questions may come. So when you are preparing like that, you can get a clue what type of things they can ask in an examinations. Okay, so here I was listed out what are all the important topics as per subject wise, but I think hope I got already took on a more times. So hence I was going fast with these slides. Okay, and I will try to share this particular part to all people through you when you are getting an a certificates, then you can go get. In pharmaceutics, we should prepare all charts which are present in LACMAN. And uh, for semi-solids, prepare your charts and tablets, capsule, aerosol, parenteral, sterilizations, all those things you can go get with the QC test, dissolution apparatus, defects, coating defects, all those things. And you make use of Remington for pharmaceutical calculations, neosomes, liposomes, and uh, resealed erythrocyte, you concentrate on NDDS and books for your pharmaceutics are Lackman, Ansel, Banker, Remington, Mittal, Gupta, and Fuse publication, etc. And similarly for pharmacology, all classification mechanisms and uh, concentrate on CNS, ANS, CVS, and follow your Rankin-Dahl, Tripathi, and Lipin card book. For medicinal chemistry, prepare a chart for classifications Study the structure and nomenclature and refer the standard books such as Wilson Giswald 4A and a book written by my guru, Dr. V. Alagar Swami. And metabolism, you concentrate on adverse effect and synthesis, only starting material, type of reaction and name reaction, if any, and if any major catalyst used also, you can try to remember. And similarly, for all subject analysis, cognacy, microbiology, biochemistry, follow Satya Narayana and Leninger, then clinical pharmacy, uh, study simultaneously when you are studying the drug itself. 
and pharmaceutical jurisprudence, then physical pharmaceutics and organic chemistry. Again, that we follow that book which was written by V. L. Swami. <coughs> Biopharmaceutics, biotechnology. And now coming to that, another important thing: do's and don'ts. With these things, I will complete my sessions. Do's. What are all the things we should do, and what are all the things we should not do during our examinations? Plan your study well. So these things. One year before itself, or seven months before. That is the thing. This is my part. This way only I am going to do. And confidence and continuity. Be confident that yes, you can. You can do anything. Okay. So that one you confident and continuously you study. Don't give a gap. If you are giving an a gap, it will make it as an a big and it is difficult to start again. Concentrate on your studies. Don't deviate your studies. revision and group discussion this is on a more more crucial things because whatever we are studying it may volatile we can forgot because so many months before itself we are starting our preparation so this group discussion and revision will make us to remember all those things always try to search yourself and collect that information don't rely on that ready made materials always try to mark a point when you are first time reading in your books because that will make you to make your revisions easy and simple if time permit please go through your least important topics also why means to minimize the risk factor read classifications daily because we may forgot easily practice numerical questions every day that will make you faster in the examination learn and remember all the formulas by means of an a card try to make a chart try to make a short notes flash cards for on a very important topics in various subjects focus on uses mechanism and unique side effects of on a various drugs use abbreviation in order to remember the names that is the mnemonics what i told basic concept you try study and you can understand the things and be strong in your basic concept sometimes revision is also play a major role so hence always in your schedule while you are preparing your time table give your time for your revisions also my dear students during that examination okay tomorrow is examination please be sleep well on the previous day of examination full night studying in that during uh, previous day of examination is not advisable because you may not get a concentration on that examination so sleep well on previous day of examination if possible visit your exam center on the previous day itself and confirm that is your examination center and reach that examination center at least 3 hours before examination why means as nta is suggesting 2 hours before you should enter in that examination center to complete some formalities so better 1 hour earlier so 3 hours before you are examination your examination is 2 o'clock means try to reach there before 11 o'clock eat easily digestible foods and fruits during that examination on previous day and don't go get with enough fast foods it may affect our stomach check your surroundings in examination halls once you reach your examination halls be cool and check your surroundings any papers or any other thing is there means intimate immediately to the persons who is responsible Uh, that is an invigilators be calm and cool don't think about anything negatively read questions slowly and carefully because that will decide your fact remember always about negative marking i told you to remember about negative marking only not about negative thoughts be always a positive so this is the uh, instruction which was given by an nta in the last year this year also you people may get so during an examination or when you are entering into that examination center what are all the things you should bring and what are all the things you should not get into that examination halls so always remember your date of examination shift what course you are going to write and what is the venue which was all the things will be intimated you know your admit card okay so note down the reporting time gate closing time once the gate was closed they will not open in that examination center that's why i told you people to go at least 3 hours before that examination and the shifting timing venue of test all those things 
and familiarize it, which center you are going to write, whether you know that particular place or not. So that's why previously you can go and visit and be aware of that gate closing time. Download your admit card and take a printout at least previous day itself. Better now itself. For 2021, it came. So now itself, you can take a um, download and take a printout. Don't rely on that uh, on that day nearby an examination center. I can go and download and I can take on a printout. Maybe net connection you may not get correctly, or the printer shop may be closed. Without that printed copy, they will not allow. So don't take on a risk. Yearly itself, you can download and take two, three printouts. One you can keep in your file and one you can keep for your examinations. Before starting your room or home, check whether you take an admit card, you take on your passport size photograph, or you take on your original uh, uh, ID proof. Okay, and if you are having an, uh, a PWD, then you can take your certificates also. Pen, pencil, blank paper, they will give in the examination center itself. There is no need of taking yours. Okay, so they themselves they will give on a pen, pencil, paper for this what purpose are for rough work purpose. What are all the things we should not do? Full night study, I was not suggest before day of examinations. Be take good sleep. Don't skip your breakfast or lunch during the day of examination. You may fall down during that examination also. So eat some light foods. Last meet reach to examination center. Examination is two o'clock. Class meet 150, 145. Like your university examination, please don't go like that. Three hours before because you must at least two hours before in your examination center. Missing documents, I already told you. Taking printout on the last meet, all those things are void. Don't tense and panic. Last meet study and revision, be cool. Fast answering, avoid it. We have enough time. 1.44 minutes for each question. So don't fast answering. Don't try to attend all 125 questions. No need. Even your toppers also will get only on a 315 or 320 marks. Don't use your mo mobiles before your examinations. This is an, uh, one example from my student. Hard work will never fail. So he's an uh, uh, Hari Venkat. He's one of my students. He's an uh, actually second year he is detained detained student but because of his hard work he got an a 36 all india rank and he studied m farm sutiks in an iit banaras hindi university varanasi now currently he is uh, doing his phd in maastricht university in netherlands so don't think about in any negative things always think positive hard work will never fail his hard work made him to reach that Netherlands University for his PhD. That all power is within you, my dear students. You can do anything and everything, which was a quote given by the Swami Vivekananda. So all power is within you. You can do anything and everything. So ultimately, you can get your GPAT score 2021. Nothing is impossible. The very impossible itself contain possible so everything is possible my dear students don't compare with anybody i told so obama is retired at 55 but the trump started his career at 70 only sydney is three hours ahead of perth but it doesn't make that Perth is slow that three hours someone is graduated at 25 but he can wait at five years before for securing a good job Someone became CEO at 25 and died at 50, while another became a CEO at 50 and lived to 90 years. Someone is still single, but someone else got married. Everyone in the world, we have on our own time zones. People around you, it may seem to they are ahead of you, but might seem to behind you some of people's. But everyone is running their own race, my dear students. So. Wait for your right moment to act. And my suggestion for you is you are not early and you are not late, my dear students. You are very much on time. So all the best, my dear students, for your GPAT 2021. So with these things, I will finish my presentations and 
the session is open for questions you can ask your questions my dear students uh thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much for your tips and tricks it's really i, I think that it will really help uh, all the students uh session is open for question and answer those students those who are uh, having questions can raise their hand we will take the question we will unmute you uh, sir till that time we have a questions from youtube as well as uh, from a chat box also so uh, just i will ask the question from uh, youtube sir yes madam so is there any separate cut off uh, for pwd general student yes madam it was clearly mentioned pwd students there will be a separate cut off mark which will be given by an nta so in my slides also i was mentioned for pwd students what is the cut off mark in our previous examination that was i clearly mentioned in our uh, my slide itself madam okay thank you sir uh so uh, how uh, ews certification used uh, means uh, ranking how it is used so for this is an economically weaker section ews students so that particular uh, sections will be used based on that whoever the pupils they get uh, applied under that economically weaker sections so in that category they will select the students and based on that uh, percentage wise they will select how many students are eligible under that particular category so hence they will decide their cut off mark in that ews category okay sir uh, sir how many times we can appear for niper so we can appear there is no limitations uh, for gpat and other nipers there is no no age limitation as well as the number of times what we are appearing only thing if you are on a graduates and if you are on a final year students if you are ready to pay your examination fees you can appear for that g pattern nipa uh, sir uh, one more question uh, what is the difference between doing mpharm with g pat and pg set in universities does it really matters yes definitely um, actually what is the g pat and on a uh, you are um, Uh, what is that uh, the another examination what you had asked that is on a state level examinations and this gpat is on a all india level examinations so when you are getting on a score in on a gpat you are eligible to study m pharmacy that master degree in on a throughout that indias when you are going with that state level examinations you are eligible only in that state within that state university only and in that state university also they will give your first preference to that gpat scorer only if we if, if any gpat scorer is not applied then only they will come into that pg set all those things okay so if you are on a gpat scorer then you are one step above to that particular pg set students so for example in the particular university if you want to study on a pharmaceutics okay if you are on a top ranker so first preference is gpat so when you are in first preference all the options are available for you when you are pg set the things some people are uh, complete uh, they have in a gpat score and they opted that particular department when you are on a pg set score or when you are going to the counseling that the particular department may not be available for you so always that gpat thing will be more than that pg set examinations Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Sir, from YouTube, one question is there. Yes, madam. Uh, after qualifying GPAT, are we eligible for PhD also? That they will consider you when many people are coming, uh, applying for a particular um, uh, particular course that is on a PhD. They are applying, and each university they may have on a separate entrance test for on a PhD. okay during your interviews after that selection from your examination based on that mark they will call for an interview also so during that interview some 10 people are coming all are qualified in that entrance test but if you are having an a gpat score it will give an added advantages for you people so hence ultimately the chance of getting an a phd admission is more compared to other people so it will be very useful definitely it will play a role in phd also for getting an a seat yes sir thank you uh, sir can you guide the cut off rank to get admission in iit bhu so if you are on a top 50 or top 100 you will get an a seat in an iit uh, bhu definitely so your aim should be top 100 so top 100 means above 300 marks 
so try to aim above 300 marks if your score is above 300 and your rank is below 50 or below 100 that you will definitely get an iit big achieve shorts so in my slides also i told one of my students vengat khari who is on all india rank 36 he got an a pharmaceutical seats in iit big achieve and he completed his study itself so aim for 300 and you will get an a seat in iit big achieve yes sir. Uh, sir how much possibility of questions to come from previous year question papers so again there is an a million dollar questions that one because every year that the they are asking question is changing because it is an all india examination they know everybody will find out they will analyze those things and i will they will try to um bring those questions in that things so if they are asking from an old questions all people are capable to answer that particular questions and the chances of coming on a repeated questions are very 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 rare i can tell maximum 10 percentage that is also high on i'm telling maximum 10 percentage you can get it but same questions will not come similar type of your questions may come so for example if they are asked um um uh, which of the following drugs contain pyridine nucleus in one category for example in anti tubercular if they are asking pyridine containing drug molecule the next time they will not ask the same question same option instead of that they can ask it, which of the following drugs contain benzodiazepine nucleus and the option will be different so same question same options very 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 rare only we will get on a different questions and we will get on a different options but type of questions may be similar okay sir uh, sir what is cut off for general candidates with pwd uh, how much means last year it was and uh, for how many marks pwd students can aim to beat about uh, safer side so actually exact i want to tell means i don't know about this uh, pwd candidates it depends upon that state and that uh, norms which was followed by a uh, particular institute they will decide the things so state to state the percentage of um, candidates which was ad admitted under that pwd will be vary so based on that it will come so the cutoff will be generally less than that general category of our students so if you qualified that one then if a seat is available under that pwd candidates you can able to admit for that m pharmacy degree uh, so one more question uh, is that mandatory to all the institutions uh, to choose the students from gpat score or any interviews will be there after that yes definitely i told it will be depends upon that institutional policy so not all institutes those institute they are participating that's why in the starting slide i mentioned participating institutes so <clears throat> those who are all participating in the gpat 2021 they are eligible to admit those categories of an student through that gpat okay so on whatever that the policies they have internally if they have on a group discussion if they have on a uh, personal interview all those things will also be considered but the majority major weightage will be given to your gpat score okay sir uh, so uh, some students are having doubt that uh, gpat score is uh, uh, it's for overseas universities also it is not um, what is that they will not accept this gpat score but when you are going the things it will give an added advantages okay if you are on a gpat uh, qualified student means it will give an added advantages and you can get an a seats in an a very good university based on your they will not consider and they will not give an a stipend all those things but it will help you to select a good universities and it will help you to uh, get an a chances from that particular good universities yes sir now in youtube also and in zoom chat also sir questions are there regarding last 15 days are remaining sir so uh, can you guide me in this 15 days what we can concentrate on yes all uh, my dear students this last 15 days will be on a very crucial and my suggestion is please don't go get for your new topics please revise whatever you got already studied try to revise the classifications try to read about that uh, remember about that what is the important side effects of on uh, many drugs molecules not all side effects uh, nausea vomiting such type of things i am not telling individuals that specific side effects specific mechanisms 
okay like those things and uh, most of the things direct question you can get it from this classification in pharmaceutical jurisprudence you can go get with ana schedules all schedules and the year of most of the acts pharmacy act drugs and cosmetic acts which year it was established and some committees who are all the members of that particular committee so these are all the areas we can easily score the marks and in pharmacognosy that we can go get with that uh, what is that active ingredient from that uh, what is the major use of that one what is the basic nucleus which was present in that one and coming to that two ticks you can go get for ana uh, this uh, uh, dose calculation formulas okay so such type of things you can try to revise and don't study anything newly in these 15 days whatever you studied please revise that one and try to go get with ana uh, old question papers okay revise that old question papers so that will be very helpful in these last 15 days so one uh, one more question one these are very simple simple doubts but they are having doubts yes sir uh, yes uh, student are having doubts sir uh, if we are not qualifying gpad then uh, how we can do the mpharm are we eligible for doing mpharm yes you are eligible my dear students the gpad is useful to get an a good pharma graduates to uh, uh, admit in an uh, all institutes based on your gpad score and each state government they have an uh, different policies and different examinations to admit in that uh, based on that what is that government quota okay and many institute we have get an uh, a management seats for your m pharmacy so if you don't have an uh, gpad score means that it is not indicating that you are not eligible for m pharmacy admission you are eligible for m pharmacy admission if you don't have an gpad also through management you can get an seats in an even very good institute also okay sir uh, there are many questions are coming sir okay. uh, yes uh, now one student is having doubt that in cognosy we compulsory biological source and families are important than anything yes definitely it is more important so always try to remember that all family my dear students so in particular family which drugs are coming uh, what is the species okay so those things directly they can ask in your examinations so cognosy 10 questions my dear students 40 marks keep remember so that is more important uh, so actually many questions are uh, keep on coming uh, many queries you have already answered in the uh, presentation itself so dear students uh, it's a uh, uh, i think it's uh, time up so we can uh, Uh, you write the queries in the post the queries in the chat box surely we will uh, sir, sir will answer your queries uh, while uh, giving the certificate with that certificate you will get the presentation details and queries answered uh, so thank you very much sir for answering the queries i hope students have uh, learned a lot about the gpat and niper and their doubts has been cleared now and uh, those who are appearing for 2021 they are very much clear about the concept what to do and what not to do thank you very much sir now i request uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Sandhya, to pre present a vote of thanks, uh, Sandhya, ma'am, please. Sandhya, ma'am, uh, unmute yourself, please. Yes, ma'am. So, good morning, everyone. Myself, Sandhya, assistant professor in the Department of Pharmacy Practice, and I am here to present the vote of thanks for today's webinar. Firstly, I would like to thank. Our today's speaker, Dr. G. Sharvanan Sir, Professor H.O.D. Department of Chemistry, for his wonderful and practical tricks in qualifying GPAT and NIPA. Sir, we hope everyone will follow your useful tips in achieving the goal of qualifying GPAT and NIPA, and that too with highest grades. And I specially thank Management MNR Educational Trust. our chairman sir mn raju garu and vice chairman sir ravi varma mandana garu for their enormous support and encouragement also i would like to thank our principal dr v alga swami sir for providing such unique platform and conducting national webinars i would also like to thank our organizers faculty members who directly and indirectly supported and make this event successful last but not least i would like to thank all the participants for our, for their valuable presence and attention thank you everyone and all the best all the students who are aiming at gpat tonight thank you oh uh, thank you sundar ma'am uh, thank you very much uh, now i request uh, dr priyanka sami sir principal uh, 
Mr. Sir, to present the memento and uh, certificate of appreciation as a token of love, sir. It's really your hard work is really appreciate appreciable. Mr. Sir, please present the uh, certificate and memento. Thank you, Dr. Saravanan, uh, sharing your valuable experience for the all the students and not only to our college, uh, so throughout the country. Hope all the students have received uh, wonderful uh, tips and tricks. By using this, you please try to score as much as possible. So nowadays, you know, more than the hard work, smart work plays an important role because uh, everything became smart. So smart became uh, very important rather than the hard work. Of course, hard work pays at any time without fail. But smart work also uh, is important nowadays because along with the technology, how we improve, this uh, smart tips and tricks also important to score as much as possible. Because as we study four years B pharmacy syllabus in, uh, and writing one exam, so uh, apart from hard work, if you put uh, or if you apply these tips and tricks, um, so definitely it will support you for the, uh, or uh, it will lessen your uh, burden so that you can go coolly and uh, you can get the better score. So Dr. Saravanan, we have well explained about the tips and tricks required by the both JPAT and NIPER. And the, all the students have received well. We are receiving so many uh, queries from the participant that shows that um, you are understanding. If all the participants require again, you please send us message. We'll, in future also, we conduct this type of uh, webinars so that everyone of our pharma uh, students will be benefited. So I thank all the members uh, who are participating and as a token of uh, appreciation from the organizing team and from the management, I provide this certificate to uh, Dr. Saravanan, uh, who is a resource person uh, of this uh, webinar. So I request Dr. Saravanan to kindly accept this certificate. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your support and encouragement, sir. I also request uh, this uh, memento that we have prepared. Uh, Dr. Jay Prakash, can we have the memento? In order to appreciate your uh, valuable uh, presence and the sparing your uh, wonderful ideas, uh, tips and tricks uh, to the Jeep and, and uh, Niper aspirants. So we, uh, on behalf of all the students, faculty members and the delegates and from the management, uh, we provide this virtual memento to uh, Dr. Saravanan. So kindly accept it, sir. And in coming days also, we'll have such a wonderful uh, webinar, sir. So kindly accept Dr. Saravanan uh, this memento. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you all uh, for being with us. Thank you very much. Take care. And in the coming, uh, upcoming exam, you do well. Wish you all the best and score well and try to be the successful uh, pharma career graduates in the future. All the best. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Uh, now uh, we will conclude the session with National Anthem. Thank you very much. Jai Prakash sir, National Anthem, please. Shubhana me jage, tava 
शुभ आशीष मांगे गाहे तब जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे Thank you, sir. Can we log up, sir? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. We can log up. Doctor uh, Jayprakash, we can uh, sign up. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Doctor, uh, doctor, sir. Thank you very much